Hi, I'm going to show you some features of Google Meet 2022 for getting ready to teach online. First, we'll look at how to start Google Meet, then we'll look at host controls, and then presenting, and then running a class. So first of all, starting a Google Meet, there are three ways I recommend it to do it. There are some others, but these are the ways that I find easiest. The first way is starting from Google Classroom. If you have a Google Classroom, underneath the banner on the left, you'll see where it says Meet and Join. You want students to be able to click there to join. So you need to make sure that that link is visible to students. Click those three dots and then click manage and it will let you turn that link on by toggling the switch, make it visible to students. And then click done and students will be able to join just by clicking. Then when you click join to start the meet, you can click the join now button that's blue and that will open up the meet for you and then the students will be able to get on as well. Starting from Google Classroom is really practical because students always know where to go to get that link. You don't need to send them anything, they just go to Classroom every day. The second way is starting from meet.google.com. You want to put type meet.google.com in your URL bar. It'll open up and look like this. You wanna make sure you're in your SQU account up here. If you're not, you should change it by clicking your avatar because if you're in your SQU account, it will start a meet for you that is connected to your SQU account. And that means only students or other people at SQU can get into it. So then you click start an instant meet and then click join now and it will open up meet for you again and you will be there. Once you're inside, you can click the I button at the bottom to see the meeting details and then click the copy joining info. And that's a link that you can now send out to your students. You need to send that out by email or some other way that you get those to students, remind or WhatsApp, but you need to get that link to students so they know where to go. The third way is starting from inside Gmail. On the bottom right hand side or somewhere in your Gmail, if you have it configured differently, it will say meet and new meeting. You can click that. It'll open up this little dialog box and you can click send invite or you can just copy that link. If you click send invite, it'll open up an email for you and you can send it to your students. And then you can click join now and that'll open up the, the meeting join page again that we've just seen. Starting from inside Gmail is pretty easy. Um, your Gmail is usually open, uh, but you do need to send invitations with, uh, with the link. Let's look at host controls. Um, host controls, on in the center at the bottom there are a few important ones we've got the mic you can toggle that on and off to mute yourself the camera you can toggle on and off uh, you can see in this my camera is off you can just see my avatar cc means closed captioning you can make closed captioning at the bottom but this is just for you if your students want closed captioning they will have to put that on their screens um, you've got a hand raising tool to check if students are listening or if they need to ask a question there's the present button that's the square with the arrow pointing up and that will let you present different tabs on your meet or present your screen there's the three dots i'll show you a little bit more about that in a second and then there is the red telephone looking hang up button that's to leave meet in the three dots if you click that a little dialog box comes open you see a menu that says whiteboard that means it will open a Jamboard. that's a another google tool if you haven't used it you can play with it but it's basically a place where everyone uh, can control a whiteboard there's changing the layout you can change from tiled to different configurations so you see different things on the screen whether you see your students faces or not full screen is pretty self-explanatory apply visual effects you can change your background out um, here's you can turn the captions on and off again phone for audio does not work i think in oman and then at the very bottom you'll see where it says settings there's a settings wheel and that will open a few different options here it will open an audio option where you should check and make sure that your microphone and speakers are the correct ones on your system. So if you're using um, headphones, for example, check and make sure that's the right thing. If you're having audio problems, that's often the problem. Video, same deal. You want to make sure that the camera that is, is on your device that you're using is selected as the camera that you're, you're showing on your Meet. Um, you can adjust the lighting a bit. Host controls gives you a few different options here. You can turn on host management that lets you control this a little bit better. That's nice. Um, you can turn off students' ability to share their screen if you need to. You can turn off the ability to send chat messages. You can turn off their ability to turn their microphones on. So basically, you can mute everyone. You can turn off their video as well, so you can make it so that students cannot turn their video on. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see it says meeting access, quick access. Um, this, if you turn it on, uh, if you turn it off, the host must join first. Um, that can be good so you don't have students just hanging out in your Google Meet. 
At the bottom right, there's some more host controls in a little different group. There's meeting info. That's where the little I is, where you can go find that uh, link to the meeting if you need to send it out. People will give you a list of everyone who is signed into your meet. Chat will give you a little chat box where students and teacher can, um, can type things to each other. Jamboard opens up that whiteboard um, feature again. Um, and host controls on the right will give you the same host controls that we just saw in the settings wheel in the three dots. So now let's look at presenting. When you want to present something in a meet, there are there's the main button at the bottom that is the present button. Click that little square with an arrow in it and you'll get this little menu. You can choose to present your entire screen, a window or a tab. I generally prefer tab. It's best for video and animation. Um, and with share tab, you aren't sharing everything on your computer desktop. It's good for privacy. You're just showing what you want them to see inside your tab. Um, but if you need to show something that's not in Google Chrome, you will need to choose your entire screen or a window. So if you're choosing like PowerPoint or Word or something like that. So once you have that chosen, share tab, then you select which tab you're going to show. I'm going to show this slides uh, presentation and I'm going to make sure that the share tab audio button is ticked because then I can share audio and video when I'm presenting. So then I've got the tab selected. I'm going to click share and that will share it out. It will show me here in meet what my students are looking at. Um, and if I want to go back and look at that presentation, I can click at the top view tab and then choose the one that I'm, that I'm presenting. And I can go look back at that one. So I can go through my presentation. For example, um, I don't need to watch what I'm presenting in meet. I need to watch my presentation. Um, if I want to change the tab that I'm presenting, I can go to a different tab and then click the button at the top that says share this tab instead. So if I want to go to Moodle, for example, I can open up Moodle, click share this tab instead, and my students will see that instead of the presentation. I can also present inside a tab by clicking the area, arrow up by slideshow. So if I want to show my, present, my Google Slides presentation, I go up by slideshow and tick that arrow. It'll bring up this little menu and I'm going to choose presenter view. And then I can just click away the little presenter view box. I don't need that the little with the little red circle there. Um, and now I'm presenting this Google Slides presentation within a tab instead of full screen. That means I can go back and forth between all my tabs really easily. Then if I want to stop presenting, I can click stop sharing and it will just go back to a picture of me or just my avatar. So let's look at some ideas for running a class in Google Meet. Some different ways to run your Meet might be to use Google Slides. That's how I run my classes. Um, I'll have a slide deck and every um, slide is like a, one of my points in my plan for the day. Um, I've got, I maybe have a whole week in my slide deck and I've got um, instructions there. I've got maybe timers. I've got links that students can follow all the information that my students need for the lesson for the day. So here on my, my little starter slide, I've got a little timer. Um, it's sometimes awkward to sit inside meet and wait for your students. I put a little timer up so they know when class will start. Um, they will get ready there. I've got a little plan, what I'm going to do for the day. I have a little checklist of what we should have done since the last class. I've got the date. Um, and here in the center, I've got a question that sort of serves as my attendance for the day also. Um, it's, it's an instruction to do something in the chat box um, to get them started thinking, to get them working while they're waiting for class to start. And then I can see who is there by looking at their answers. Um, another thing I can do in slides is to share my slide deck so I can share that with my students. Um, I can share it view only so they can go look at it and they could follow along. Um, but if I share it with edit access for all of them, then I can put links there. So I can fill up my slides with links where I want them to go do stuff while we're in class. And they can just click there if they've got slides open while they've got the meet open um, and go do what I instruct them to do. Um, another way to, to share links is in the chat box. But if I have them all preset here in a Google slide presentation, I don't need to copy paste them from anywhere. I can just, I've just got them in my lesson plan here. Um, this is another way that students can share their work as well. So if you set up your slides to have places where students can get in and edit stuff, you can get them to write, you can get them to put audio, video, pictures, things like that. So the students can work collaboratively together in one big slides document while you've got them in meet. 
Another thing that you can use while you're teaching is the chat box. Um, the chat box, of course, students can ask questions there, but they may not want to. Something you can do is you ask questions there and they have to answer them there. You can see who's being active. You can share links there. You can um, send them questions they have to respond to. That way you can make sure that students are paying attention. Um, and that kind of serves as a way of making sure that they're staying in your class for the whole session. Uh, finally, you can use the hand raise tool, bottom center, to check comprehension or just to check their attention. Hey, if you can hear me, put your hand up. You can see a list of who's got their hand up here in the people tab. Um, you'll see everyone who's got their hand up here. You can see that there's a hand raised right here. Um, and then it'll ask you if you want to take your hand down later if it's been up for a long time. But it's just a good way to make sure that everyone's on the same page. If you send them out to go to a link, for example, say, okay, go do your link, come back. And when you finish, put your hand up. And then you've got a list of everyone who's back in the meet and ready to work again. So these are some ideas of things that you can do with Google Meet that hopefully will make your lessons go a little bit more smoothly. Thank you.